I'm Dr. Matt Geller. I'm here with Dr. Bridget Chen Lee, hashtag digital eye doc. Let's talk about digital eye strain and, and, and blue light and everything that's going on in that space right now. Uh, so digital eye strain is a conversation I think that every single optometrist needs to talk to their patients every single day, mm -hmm. especially patients who are spending a lot of time on digital devices, because we are actually the group of doctors that have solutions, right. not just to treat it, but actually prevent them from uh, happening. So I think uh, it's really important for them to incorporate the, the symptoms into the patient history intake term, and the staff can actually ask that, and the doctor can very quickly just review that. So how I have that discussion is we talked about the physical ocular discomfort and the physical discomfort. We inquire our patients about their sleep, uh, the bedtime digital device habit. That's what we call a bedtime digital device habit. We actually ask patients if they have trouble falling asleep or trouble staying asleep oh, wow. and what their eyes are looking at. If people are watching Netflix on their iPad or phone for an hour or two or playing Candy Crush, with no correction, right? Yeah. They're not surprised they're having trouble falling asleep, but then they are surprised we actually have a solution. So we talk about digital habits, we give them uh, eyewear, either no correction with the blue light, or if they do need to wear glasses, we put the blue light protection with anti-fatigue lens design. So this way we can reduce their symptoms and we inquire about dry symptoms, right? So that's another touch point. Talk so about dry eyes. it's been a big eyes. practice builder probably. Oh yeah, huge. And there's so many solutions now, even for patients with perfect vision to have just eyewear with the blue light protection. So I think it's a, it should be a daily uh, patient discussion topic. So it's made your practice stand out, it's helped you build your practice. Ultimately are patients coming back more happy? I mean are they are they spreading the word about the solutions you're offering them, the treatment plans? All of the above. We're turning 20, my practice turning 20 years old. Thank yeah. you. So we don't spend any money on advertising. Uh, what we do is we remain active in social media right. and uh, we also remain very active in the community. Uh, I do quite a bit of TV and radio uh, yeah. appearances and it's I, I time, generate yeah. the public uh, to, to educate the general public what the symptoms are, what the simple solutions are and also these patients are uh, they, tend, they tend to be very loyal. We have a very loyal patient base and they refer a lot of new patients to us. Especially uh, teens and kids and young adults who have chronic headaches, who as a result of chronic sleep issues, who are heavy uh, watching entertainment in bed on the digital device mm -hmm. users. Mm -hmm. Right, because you have to trace it back to the cause. Yep, always trace it back to the correct, root cause. Correct. So you're doing a lot in myeloma and gland dysfunction, dry eye. You're doing a lot with digital eye strain, blue light. They're related. Yep, they're related. Mm -hmm. And now the other big piece of your practice and, and what you talk a lot and lecture a lot about is aesthetics. So tell me about the aesthetic side of things. I know you've got a new column out. Tell me about that. Well, thank you. So this is my new column in eye care business. I'm starting a quarterly column called Ocular Aesthetics. Check it um, out. Check, uh, check it out. It just came out. So I, I started this whole column. It's a quarterly column. Um, what, what we can do as optometrists in our daily practices that help our patients look at their best, see their best, and feel their best. Because a happy patient is... Yeah, a healthy right? patient. Correct. A happy patient's a paying patient. And a happy practice. Yep, happy yep. practice. So it sounds like you're pretty good at diagnosing to the root cause because I was reading a marketing thing recently and it was talking about how a consumer doesn't want to be sold a quarter inch drill bit, they want a quarter inch hole, Correct. right? Correct. And so you're not saying I have, um, you I know, have this aesthetic ABCD solution for you, e. it's anti-aging. You're going Correct. to, what's the end result? Correct. Right? So you're thinking differently Correct. about the situation. Yeah, it's really important to focus on the benefits, yeah. right? So with the anti-digital eye string eyewear and the contact lens solutions that we provide, it's not we're selling them a pair of glasses and the ear supply daily disposable con right. contact lens. It's about uh, by using this product, you're going to feel a lot less tired. Yep. You're going to have more energy at the end of the day so you can go home to your kids yep. and have energy go out to the park, ride a bike, and a play. Talking and about the real stuff. Of course, because so I am so that parent. Interesting. Yeah. Give me more examples about it. Let's go, like, give me give me your, your top kind of 10 examples. It doesn't even have to be about aesthetics, but okay. anything in your practice where ODs can say, oh, I'm not saying that. I'm describing it totally differently. Let me let me describe it this way. So let's talk about digital That's eye. That's a whole course right there. Yeah. No, <laughs> well, I'm actually, speaking of which, I am developing a Coke lecture okay. just on what we actually do, right. uh, the exam template, because mm -hmm. um, 
it's the questions that we ask the patients, the, the answers that we write down, the solutions that we provide. If you can tie it all to the benefits, what benefit does it provide? Yep. How, you know, we all like to say, right, improving your quality of life is our passion. Yeah. Like, well, what does blah, that blah, mean? Blah, right, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. you're just talking about it, right? But if we break it down and say, okay, let me give you an example, sleep. So how many people around the world are on their phone and a tablet watching Netflix, playing Candy Crush, or watching games. A lot, but I'm one of them. Correct, that. right? Start with one. Yeah, so my first take home message, so this year, so every year I pick one take home message I want patients to remember. So right. for this year, the take home message is, I'm not changing your habits, but if you're watching, you're, you're, if you're doing entertainment, in bed, on a digital device, with naked eyes, and you are sensitive, you do have trouble falling asleep, and you have trouble staying asleep, and when people wake up at 3 a.m., can't go back to sleep, what do they do? They're back on the phone. Or people wake up early, they get on the phone, naked eyes, especially people who are nearsighted. Mm -hmm. It just perpetuates the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the questions we ask. That's how we identify them. So uh, at the end of the exam, we tell the patient, okay, today I'm going to prescribe you this lens, the designs anti-fatigue, so you feel a lot less tired working on the computer all day. Right. I'm going to add this anti, uh, uh, like a, this coating yep. that's anti-glare that has UV, that blocks of uh, bad blue light coming out of your devices so you can fall asleep much better, Tired so you have more energy the next day, so you, uh, uh, so you don't get headache as often. Then it gets their attention. Wait, you have a pair of glasses that can do that? I don't have to give away my devices because people with chronic headache, uh, pediatricians, neurologists today are prescribing sleep hygiene. Have you heard of that term no. yet? So 2017, 2018, it. no, no, you won't do it. I know you won't do it no. because I know how active you are. So sleep <laughs> hygiene today from pediatrician and a neurologist, you know what that means? Tell me more. Sleep hygiene today means no devices, okay. no phone, no tablets, no laptop, no TV, no gaming devices an hour to two hours before you go to bed. Okay. So that'll yes, be tough that for me. will work, right? But how many people will follow it? Yes. Very, right. very few. But for those who will follow it, we tell them that. But what if we tell the patients, okay, you don't have to change your habit, but I want you to put on these new glasses I'm prescribing for you today with all the protection solution in it. Better yet, because it's not just two hours before bedtime. What are people looking at? Multiple monitors throughout the day. They're Base. I mean, look at all this whole team here. We are surrounded by LED blue light, right? Yep. So it gives them that comfort all day long. Yeah. So with the blue light, it's very important that we have the three touch point. Because I, I know our industry uh, has contra the controversy is around point number three, yeah. the long-term cumulative uh, potential retina damage, mm -hmm. right? The verdict is it, it, still it's out. not out. It's still out, right? We but, have our ideas. But the visual discomfort, the glare, the all that's real. That's proven. We have a solution, yeah. right? And the sleep issues, that's proven. Those are scientific fact, right? Because it interrupts your uh, sleep okay, cycle. Right? So, so that's an example. So you're tired too. So no headache, falling asleep better, getting quality sleep. And also, did you know that if people get quality sleep, the body produces endorphin, the happy hormone, yeah. that boosts your metabolism. So without doing anything else, your weight comes down. That gets everybody's <laughs> that attention. That gets everyone going. So let's take a step away from optometry for a second. Okay. Um, more into just life as a whole. You seem to be just a natural problem solver. Every time I see you, there's some other, there's some new way, new idea that you have to solve a problem or this new, how do people get that mindset and start doing that? Because I think a lot of people sit on the sidelines and they mm -hmm. kind of watch others, and, and maybe deep down inside them, they, they do have a shred of leadership in them, or they, they do need to solve problems, but they're not doing it. Maybe they don't know how to solve problems. So how, no, optometry think, aside, how do you go about solving problems? No, I problems? think optometry as a whole, yep. right, that's why we chose optometry as a profession. Many of us who chose optometry as a profession, because we want to be doctors, we want to be the problem solver, and most of us are that natural problem solver. We have to be really, really good communicators mm -hmm. to our patients. Mm -hmm. We're not just prescribing a pair of glasses. We're not just trying to sell them your supply contact lens. We are giving them solutions to literally help them have a much better quality of life. It's about the overall wellness care. 
a lot of our patients are hearing about for the first time. It's that shock factor. It's like, wait, what? I just came in to get my contact lens refill. You tell, you what do you mean I have a disease, but I'm really yeah. healthy yeah. and I eat organic food and <laughs> I exercise. What do you mean I have a disease, right? right? So it's, so it, a lot of it, so the communication really is the key, but tie it to a simple phrase that they can't relate to. I love it. I'm always Appreciate improving. It. Well, yep. thank you for having me.